So I've spoken with Nell a couple times um, since being here this year, and you guys have been exhibiting with us at Hound of Messe for quite a few years now. Um, there are many people in the audience today, and I would assume that some have not particularly been here before. Um, if you want to give a bit of a brief overview of Nell Hydrogen, um, what you guys are currently doing and what markets you're currently working within, that would be, I think, a great start. Okay. So we, we've been around quite a while. We've started uh, back, all the back in 1927. So we've done the large scale electrolysis for multiple generations. So we are involved uh, all the way through the value chain. We do uh, alkaline electrolysis. We produce that out of Norway in combination with contract manufacturing out of Hungary and, and soon to be Poland. And then we do PEM electrolysis in the US. And then we do um, uh, fueling stations out of, out of Denmark in Germany, no, Denmark. So we have, um, we have uh, quite a lot of capacity on electrolyzer. We're the biggest electrolyzer producer around, um, and we have a long history in these different fields. In terms of um, uh, the, the, scale, the scaling up for, for one gigawatt, mm. um, can you just kind of explain to some that might not be familiar with the industry what, what that actually means for the shift in the industry, like what the production capabilities would be uh, from doing so, and what that means in terms of operating um, operational and, and costs? That was a lot in the one in one question. Huh? <laughs> Open it. So, so um, let me let me compare this maybe to the solar industry because uh, quite a few of us have background also from the solar industry. And what we saw there is uh, we saw a massive scale up uh, of capacity. And um, we fundamentally believe that the hydrogen industry has the potential to be as large as solar and wind is today. Uh, the thing is that now there are a lot of small capacity and you're not, uh, you don't have the necessarily cost position. So we think, we think that, yes, there needs to be technology and innovation, the technology development, but the biggest cost driver now to get the cost down is basically to scale up, massively scale up and drive, uh, drive out costs out of the value chain all the way through the supply chain. It's exactly the same that we saw in solar. Scaling up, costs going down. So basically what we are doing at the moment is that we are trying to test the market and we, we are selling forward. So we're selling, we're selling products in large volumes on the future cost position that we think that we can achieve by scaling up. In terms of scaling up, how does that, how does that work? Like what specifically is being scaled up in terms of technology and in, with your plants specifically? So, so I mean, today we are the biggest producer of, of electrolyzers, but you know, it's small. Huh? We have 40 megawatt capacity in Norway, we have about 40 megawatt in, in, in the US. So, so, so by having 80 megawatt, you're, the, you're one of the biggest, which is, which is, uh, which is obviously a strain. So now we, so, so to be able to scale up, you obviously need good support from the market. So you need to find the right partners to work with. In our case, we work with Nicola which is one uh, important uh, player that we work with. They have ordered, they basically ordered one gigawatt of electrolysis um, to be delivered over five years with associated fueling equipment. Uh, so then what we do is that we turn around and we say, okay, we need, to, we need to scale up. We can't deliver one gigawatt out of a 40 megawatt factory. So we then took the investment decision last year and we expanded to 360 megawatt. Uh, and, 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 and that will allow us then to support Nicola with a completely different cost position. We cut the cost by more than 40%. But, you know, and then you can say 360 megawatt, that's big. But looking again back to solar, it's not. Because, you know, you really need to go the extra step. So that's why we already have in the draw, we have a factory concept for 1.2 gigawatt. We have a factory concept for 2.2 gigawatt. And then we can cut the cost by 40% again. And then you, you really start to see the impact of hydrogen. I mean, if we want to change the world, you know, we need to significantly step up the capacity and we need to significantly get the cost down. That's the only way we can do it. Wow. So in terms of the technical side, um, I know that there's probably some people that not, might not be familiar, but one, one gigawatt, how much hydrogen does that produce? And what, can you give me an example of like what that would be used for currently? Well, currently, um, uh, one, one gigawatt of electrolysis, if you install that, produces around about 500 tons a day. So it's a big facility. Um, today, um, you need to look to the fossil hydrogen space. I mean, already today, f this is a lot of numbers, so it's a bit boring, but it's about 55 million tons of hydrogen being produced today from natural gas, coal, oil. 
goes into ammonia industry, refineries, methanol industry. Um, and we this is this is and we want to replace the fossil with the green. So and this is just a drop-in replacement. So we we take out the fossil molecule, we put in the green molecule. And why are we not doing it now? Well, it's because we need to get the cost down. We need to get capacity up. So and we have that on our roadmap. We know that we can kick out uh, natural gas reforming. We know that we can kick out uh, blue hydrogen. Uh, it's just a matter of scaling up capacity. So in terms of Europe's uh, 2030 uh, environmental targets, um, what does this mean for the, com for the vehicle industry, specifically commercial, commercial trucks and commercial transportation? So um, obviously everyone benefits from getting, uh, getting the cost down and the capacity up and also, also heavy duty transport. Uh, so we see that uh, in many places when you, you typically, I mean, when you build hydrogen infrastructure production capacity, you can share the, the production capacity among many applications. So if you have a production facility producing for an industry application, you can also serve very cheap hydrogen for, for mobile application. So, so, so um, many of these uh, many of these projects. When we see this industry is developing, we see that you know the infrastructure can be shared between industry and between mobile. The low cost green hydrogen enjoyed by industry can also be enjoyed by you know all of these applications within mobility. And now we see that heavy duty mobility is taking off. Uh, we see faster than we expected development within heavy duty trucking. We see bus initiatives. We see fast ferries slow ferries in Norway, even ships uh, is coming. So, so, and all of these industries will enjoy the same benefit for the cost going down. Do you currently uh, work on any particular projects that would re relate to, to transportation at all? So one of the, we, we, we do work on multiple projects um, um, in all of these categories. Um, and we have historically delivered bus stations, uh, light duty vehicle, uh, uh, trucking stations, but the biggest project at the moment and the most important one and uh, kind of the lighthouse project is the initiative we do together with Nicola. Nicola Motor is uh, launching their fuel cell truck in 14 days. Uh, obviously, they they've um, they've released they've had an earlier version which have been was released in the beginning or the end of 2016, but now they're launching their uh, unveiling their uh, next generation uh, truck. And they have um, uh, laws, big ambitions to, to uh, basically transform heavy-duty trucking in the U.S. But we see the same happening in Europe. I mean, they also have a European truck, but you see other manufacturers also coming to the market with, with, uh, with, um, with uh, hydrogen solutions. So anything that is very heavy and needs to go far benefits from more hydrogen. So we will see that uh, in, in many of those markets. Great. Do you have any plans for any projects here, here in Europe moving forward? Regard, other than the production plant, do you have any um, automotive projects coming up here? Uh, yes. Um, besides expanding our production capacity, um, we will address you know, anyone that is interested in, in deploying hydrogen technologies. So we currently work on different bus projects. Uh, we work on a project called H2 Bus Europe, which is 600 hydrogen buses. Uh, we work um, together with Alstom on a train initiative in the, north of the, uh, in the north of Germany. We work together with Uno X uh, relat uh, related to rolling out infrastructure for, for light and heavy duty in Norway. Um, and we also sell stations in other markets. So there are, there are, there is a lot of things going on also in Europe. In terms of the audience uh, participation here, is there any opportunities for uh, new markets or new um, ventures with you, with anyone in the audience who might be representing one of the companies here today? I'm sure there are. We have, we've had some interesting discussions both, uh, both yesterday and today. Um, I will be here for the rest of the day, so if everyone wants to have a discussion, I'm more than happy to do that. We, we do enjoy these kind of events because we, it allows you to kind of have an informal discussion with different potential partners. And, and we know as a company that we cannot do everything ourselves. So we have to partner up. So you see typically that we partner up with, with, with different players in these different uh, segments. We partner up with someone in, 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 on transportation, on marine applications, you know, for wind applications. 
So, so uh, anyone that that um, you know I can make more successful, I'll be happy to partner with them. Great. Um, on that note, I'm going to open this up to the audience. Does anyone have any questions for Jan regarding Nell Hydrogen? Are there any questions in the audience? Okay, um, I'm going to encourage you to go visit booth B60. It's just in the corner here to your right. Um, thank you so much for being here today and answering some questions. Uh, again, if anything comes to mind, please stop at the Nell booth, um, and we'll be happy. I'm sure you'll be happy to answer any questions. Of course. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.